When the final rebound of a win over the LA Sparks fell to her, Caitlin Clark, who'd already become the only WNBA rookie to ever drop a triple-double, had now done it twice. Absurdly, despite being a rookie, Clark already has more triple-doubles than 99.6% of players in WNBA history. Additionally, teams Caitlin's on are now 19-0 when she posts a triple-double, going back to her 17 at the University of Iowa. From the unheard of attention she's drawing from hoop fans, both positively and negatively, to the records this woman's setting, much more on the face of women's basketball is on its way, so keep it locked right here. Right quick, just 14.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and X at dflowhoops for a follow back. I was forced to make a new X account, by the way, but back to the content. Thankfully for mostly the better, but unfortunately in some cases the worst, Caitlin Clark is essentially all anyone can talk about in the basketball universe right now. That said, to the non-believers, hate on her all you want, and people have in high abundance, which has been heavily covered across YouTube and we'll get to a little bit later on, but it's undeniable at this point, no matter what your biases are, that no one, not just today, but in WNBA history, has brought attention to the league at even in the same stratosphere as Caitlin Clark. With all due respect to the legends that have came before her, as envious as many are, this woman Caitlyn is box office and is about to make players of all colors and creeds in the league fat bags of cash for decades to come, more money they could have even imagined of making prior to her ascension and arrival. You've likely seen the highly viewed and liked posts about her across all social media platforms, but the TV ratings back up Clark's marketability to an even crazier extent. Amazingly, the WNBA has outperformed the NBA in terms of views on NBA TV in the year 2024, as the highest viewed game from that network, as you can see from this chart, was the Fever vs. the Wings on September 1st. To be fair, the most marquee NBA games are shown on ESPN and TNT, but the fact that 4 of the 10 games listed there are Caitlin Clark games speaks volumes to her popularity, bred by a combination of how lethally diverting her talent is, her Jordan LeBron Kobe-esque will to win that shows up in her enthusiasm, and how classy of a spokesman she is. All of those qualities forge together to attract a range of attention from anyone from your diehard know-it-all fan that appreciates every subtle nuance of the game, to your casual fringe sports fan that's only drawn in for the trends. Regarding her aptness between the four lines, Clark's signature once-in-a-lifetime, unconsciously unstoppable deep-range sniping, her ability to push the pace in transition with 99 overall speed, and her weave-it-through-anything sewing-style passing chops open up an incredible amount of space and in turn make everything a thousand times easier on her teammates. The blossoming of Clark's finesse around the basket has also been a factor to her dominance as her float game's taken a massive step forward since transitioning to the pros, but it's not like Caitlyn's overshooting or overdribbling. For example, how Clark's connected with Aaliyah Boston has been prevalent as Clark and Boston have become the youngest duo in WNBA history to record 20.10 rebound double-doubles in two different games now. Portraying historical rarity are the accomplishments and records caitlin has been achieving and setting. Against the Sparks, Clark played in all 40 minutes for the fourth time in the 2024 WNBA season and didn't waste a second in him. She became the first rookie and just the sixth WNBA player ever to make 100 threes in a season. She's also the fastest player ever, rookie or not, to reach that mark, as it was tallied in just 34 games. Most remarkably, Clark's now third place all time in terms of most simultaneous 20-point 10 assist games, but the reason that's ridiculous is because it took her merely 34 games to record 7 of those 20-plus point 10 dime performances, while it took legend Diana Taurasi a hefty 559 games to record 9 of them, and Courtney Vandersloot 422 to record 10 of them. Then there's the lethalness of Clark's chronicled shot-making, facilitating balance that shows up in the WNBA record books. Clark's the first player in league history to post at least 200 assists and 100 threes in a single campaign, which obviously becomes more unheard of 
when pointing back to the fact that it's her first year in the association. To that point, and what highlights how rare of a first-year player she truly is, Clark was named Eastern Conference Player of the Month for August, making her the first rookie ever to earn a Player of the Month award, which began being handed out by the WNBA in 2010. From a team perspective, Clark's ability to make her teammates better has shown up directly in the Indiana Fever's improvement from last season compared to this one. The Fever team she's currently orchestrating at the point of attack finished with the WNBA's worst record in 2023. After drafting Clark first overall, they've now clinched their first playoff berth in eight years. Since returning from the Olympic break, the Fever are 7-2. Over those nine games, Clark's posted at least 19 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds, a stretch that's included three 28-plus point games. Still, for this success, you have to give credit to Aaliyah Boston's post-footwork, the team's leading scorer in Kelsey Mitchell's pure shot creation, Lexi Hull's 3 and D presence, and Erica Wheeler's versatile offensive bag. But in the win that clinched them their first playoff berth in 8 years, the rookie that's 180 the fortunes of this Indiana franchise in Caitlin Clark joins Sabrina Ionescu, Candace Parker, Courtney Williams, and Alyssa Thomas as one of five, not rookies, folks, but players ever to have dropped multiple career triple doubles in the history of the league. However, on another note, including questions about the legitimacy of that triple double, with trash talkers calling it stat padding, there's been an abundance of hate directed at Clark. The amount of hate collectively from this calendar year as a whole is honestly, I found, overwhelming to cover all of, let alone a bit of, just based off the negativity, jealousy, among other things that it consists of. From ESPN's Molly Karam saying Clark didn't deserve to be in the Olympics because of her lack of talent, to Clark being snubbed for the Olympic team by itself, to Cheryl Swoops calling Caitlin's NCAA scoring record illegitimate, with Swoops swooping in to lead a flurry of Clark hatred, the hating has been in high abundance and has stood out just as much as the positive attention, which is pretty unfortunate. In terms of all the shady BS thrown Clark's way both on and off the court, off of it, in which we haven't talked about too much but only takes a single YouTube search to find out, NBA legend Charles Barkley had an elite take in response to it, saying, quote, These ladies, and I'm a WNBA fan, cannot have this Caitlin Clark thing up any worse if they tried. This girl is incredible. The number of eyeballs she brought from college to the pros, and for these women to have petty jealousness, you say to yourself, damn, what is going on here? The thing I love about her, she never says a word. End quote. I mean, we might as well move Clark to the NBA if the WNBA's fumbled the bag this much. In all seriousness, while my last video on Clark didn't cover the hating off the court from out-of-line skeptics, I did go highly in-depth on how Clark's been targeted on the court in this video right here, so go check that out right now. Thank you so much for watching, this was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.